Hey guys, welcome to the video for graphing standard form and finding the vertex. We're going to have two parts to this video. The first part is going to cover graphing standard form and the other part will cover finding the vertex using a standard form equation. So that'll be in a separate video, so I won't include that here. All right, so we are in unit 7a. Um, our essential question is, what are the key characteristics of quadratic functions and how can I find the vertex without a graph? So um, we talked about key characteristics when we were identifying our parabolic parts. So just identifying based off the graph that we were given. Um, today, we're actually going to be able to graph that and then identify everything. So we're basically adding on a couple more steps, but really it's not that much more. So before we move on, I do want to go over some key vocabulary words. One of the words which is standard form of a quadratic function. Now this is going to be y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So this is just one form. So back when we were learning about lines, there were three types of forms. There was point-slope form, slope-intercept form, and standard form. With quadratics, we have two forms. We have standard form, and then the next one we'll learn about is vertex form. So this is just one of the forms that we learn. And every equation always has an x and a y if we want to graph it, because we need an independent and a dependent. So they always have x's and y's in them, and then everything else kind of has a different meaning. Now just a reminder that a, b, and c are just numbers. And another way we see y is also seeing it as f of x. So I do want to write that here just so that you're used to seeing that. Okay. Now let's talk about the vertex. Well, the vertex, again, is either your highest or your lowest point. It is a point on your graph, the center point, the middle point, or the turning point when your graph goes from positive to negative or negative to positive. It's the point where it changes direction. So for example, on this one, oops, wrong notes. Um, on this one, right, our quadratic is going up, but then once it hits the vertex, it goes back down. Um, over here, our quadratic is going down, but once it hits the vertex, it starts to go up. So it is the point where it starts to change direction, the turning point, you know, all those things. So the vertex is your highest or your lowest point, and that's going to depend on whether your graph is a, a minimum graph or a maximum graph. Okay, so let's draw. Now, I didn't really talk about it in the first day because we didn't really know about standard form yet, but there are two types of quadratics you'll see. Some you'll see are ones that open up, okay? Now, if they open up, it means that your A value is positive. So they open, oops, not open if, open up if your A is positive, okay? And you know that's a positive when it looks like a smiley face. A is positive. And you're like, well, what's the A you're talking about? The A I'm talking about is right here your very first number in the quadratic in standard form. Now, I do want to mention that standard form is the highest exponent first, and then it gets smaller. So for example, this would be an example of something that's in standard form. Okay, This quadratic is in standard form, whereas if I had the 5x in the front, that's not standard form. You want the biggest exponent to come first. So you want the 2 to go first. Um, so your A here, if it's positive, whatever that positive number is, it's going to face up. It's going to open up. Now, it's going to open down if your A is negative. So if it's a negative number. It doesn't matter if B and C are negative or positive. It's really your A that will tell you if it's going to open up or down. So your graph will open down like this, and it will look like a sad face because it's negative. So it opens up if A is positive with a smiley face, and opens down if A is negative like a sad face. Okay, the next thing we learned about, or the other thing that we learned about the previous day was the axis of symmetry. Now this is a line that cuts your parabola into two different equal parts. So for example, if I have a parabola like this, the axis of symmetry is gonna cut it down the very center at the vertex. Okay, so it goes through my vertex. And remember, it's always written as X equals a number. Okay, so that is the equation, or not the equation, but the way the equation always looks when I'm talking about the axis of symmetry, okay? And let me recolor this because it's a little bothering me. I'll make a baby blue, and then we'll erase this. Whoops. Come on. Um, so yeah, your quadratic... If it, uh, any way it look, faces up or down, it's always going to have a line of symmetry because it's going to have one side that's similar mirror image on the other side. And the line that cuts it in half is always going to be a vertical line. That's why it's x equals. Okay, 
Now, I do want to mention something. Now, this is something new. There's a thing called the axis of symmetry formula. It's the formula to find the axis of symmetry if you don't have a graph, right? So normally, we have a graph. We can see where the line is that cuts it in half. But what happens if I don't have a graph? Well, I have a formula for that. So I'm going to show you the formula now, but we're not going to need it till the very end of the notes. And it's actually going to be in the second video. So we really won't use the formula at all in this video, but we will in the next video where I talk about the second part of the notes, which is below where we talk about finding the vertex by hand. Okay, so the formula, now it's going to start as x equals because your equation for axis of symmetry starts with x equals. So it's going to be x equals negative b divided by 2a. And so this formula is super helpful when we don't have a picture to look at and we need to find the axis of symmetry. Now, what do you like? We're like, where does the b and the a come from? Well, it comes from the equation up here. So it's just like when we did our factoring and we identify a, b, and c. You're going to use your b and a to help you plug into the formula. But again, you'll worry about that in the second part of the notes. Okay. So let's talk about whether these are in standard form or not. And if they're not, arrange it in standard form and then identify A, B, and C. So starting with number one, is this in standard form? Well, you always want to see if your highest exponent goes first. And this one does. It goes from two, and then it goes to one, and then it goes to a number without the seven. So this is yes. This is in standard form. Okay? So then let's identify our A, B, and C. Well, a here, remember, a is always attached to the x squared. So the a here is 3. The b is always attached to just the x. So this is going to be negative 5, and the c is always the constant. It's the number that's always by itself, nothing attached to it. And this is positive 7. Okay, so that's identifying a, b, and c. Number 2, is this in standard form? No, because you want your highest exponent to go first. So really, we want this guy to be in the front. So this would be y equals negative 2x squared, okay, because we want to move that to the front. Well, what would come next? Would the 3x come next or the 7? The 7 would come, or not the 7, the 3x would go next because that's the next highest exponent, which is a 1, because the other one doesn't have an exponent. So lastly, we have plus 7, okay? So now it's in standard form. So what is our a value here? Our a is always attached to x squared, and this is going to be negative 2. Our b value is always attached to the regular x, which is positive 3, and the c is 7. Now, if it's not in standard form, you might make a mistake, and you might number your a, b, and c incorrectly. So make sure it's in standard before you identify a, b, and c. Number 3, y equals 8 plus 4x squared. Is this in standard form? No. So I've got to rearrange it. I want to put the highest exponent first. In this case, it's the 2. So I have 4x squared. And then I don't have anything with just a regular x, so then I move on to my positive 8. Now, this is in standard form now, but what's different about this one? Well, this one's missing a term, so let's try to figure out which one it's missing. Well, what would be my a value here? Well, remember, a is always attached to the x squared, so here a is going to be positive 4. Well, what's my b value? Well, b is attached to the thing that has just the x, and that isn't here. And if it's not there, then it's 0. Okay, remember nothing as a number is zero. And then your C value is the number that's always by itself, which is going to be eight here. All right, so that is just identifying whether or not it's in standard form. So now we're going to practice and review what we did the day before. So the day before we had a graph, we were given a graph and we were asked to identify the key features. So just looking at this graph, what is my vertex? Well, and again, I would give you the equation the previous day, but we didn't do much with it, and today we will. But we're just reviewing what we did last time. So your vertex is the middle point, the center point. So that is going to be right here at the very bottom, and that point is going to be positive 1, negative 4. Okay? Axis of symmetry, AOS. Again, <laughs> that was weird. Again, that is the line that cuts your parabola in half, and it always goes through the vertex. So your axis of symmetry is going to cut through your parabola exactly in half right there. Well, that line goes through the x-axis, so it's going to be x equals. And what number does it go through? It goes through positive 1. And just a reminder that that number is always the same as the x value of your vertex. x equals the x value of the vertex. Vertex. Okay. Next thing, is this a minimum or a maximum? Well, you want to look at the, vert the parabola here. Does it have a minimum point or does it have a maximum point? This parabola has a minimum point. 
okay? So if it has a minimum point, this part is new. What's the value? So now we're gonna start identifying about what the value means. What I mean by value is after you identify what it's the max or min is, I want you to tell me, well, what's the min value? Tell me what that value is. Show me that lowest point. You told me it's a minimum, so what is the lowest y value on this graph? The lowest y value on this graph is negative four. Not on graph, on the, on the actual parabola. So you wanna tell me what that minimum value is. Next part, we are asked to identify the zeros. Well, what's a zero? Well, a zero is an x-intercept. How many x-intercepts do we have here? Well, the x-axis is here, and it crosses my x-axis at two points. It crosses once at negative one, so I have the point negative one comma zero. Remember, x-intercepts are number comma zero. And it crosses the x-axis again at positive three, so zero, not zero, three comma zero. Okay, so it crosses twice on my x-axis there. Okay, well, let's do the next thing. Now we have our y-intercept. Well, the y-axis is right here. Where does it cross the y-axis? It crosses at this point. Well, what is that point? Well, that's going to be at 0, negative 3. Remember, your y-intercept is 0, comma, number. Okay, so it crosses my y-axis at negative 3. What is my range? Oh, sorry, I skipped domain. What is my domain? Well, remember, domain is your x values, but this parabola is gonna go forever both ways. So the x-axis is where all of my x values are. Remember, domain is x. Well, if I go all the way to the left on the x-axis, this graph will continue to go forever and ever. This parabola will just keep going to the left, and it will go to the right forever and ever. So this is gonna be all real numbers. And the key there is that it's usually going to be all real numbers if you're graphing it, and it's not a real-world problem. So it's not a word problem. It's usually going to be all real numbers. Okay, let's talk about our range here. So ranges are y values, okay? Those are our y values. But this one is not all real numbers because, yes, it goes forever on the y-axis that way, this graph right here, like it keeps going up and up. But it doesn't always go forever on the way down because it stops. So we have to say that there's a restriction. So it always starts as y. And then you want to look at, well, does my parabola open up or does it open down? It opens up. Because it opens up, then it's going to be greater than, and it is equal to because at the very most bottom point, it does go through it. So it's going to be equal to as well, okay? And our most bottom point here is going to be negative 4. Now, the key here is that this number is always the same. Let me find a color that I haven't used yet. Mm. This, no Oops. this number is always the same as the y value of your vertex. So those are always going to match. And it actually always ma also matches your minimum value or your maximum value, depending on your graph. Okay, so that's just a review of what we did on parabolic parts. So now we're going to go into actually using the calculator to graph. Um, so if you don't have a calculator, just follow along. Um, make sure you're taking good notes so that you do know um, what to do when you have a problem like this. So to graph quadratics, we use the calculator to help us. So the first equation that we're going to graph is f of x equals x squared. Remember, f of x is the same thing as what? It's the same thing as y. So I'm going to rewrite this and say y equals x squared, because it's the same thing. Now, this is the most basic quadratic function you could ever make. Now, remember, a quadratic is a second-degree function. So this is the most basic because there's literally no numbers, nothing else. This is called our quadratic parent function. We learned this back in unit two because it's the most basic. It's the parent, and everything else are the children, and it comes from this one parent. Okay, so now we're going to graph this. Before even graphing this, do you know if it would open up or down? Well, what is your a value here? Well, our a value is positive 1. Because it's positive, our parabola is going to open up. Okay, so now let's get to graphing because we need a graph in order to identify all of these features over here. So I'm going to show you with my calculator first. So I am going to put my camera up here. All right, so this is my calculator. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reset my calculator just so um, if anything's in there that's messed up, I can get rid of that. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is if I want to graph something, I need to enter that into the calculator. Well, this was y equals x squared. So I do need to go to the y equals button, and I'm going to press y equals. And then I'm going to type in x squared. Now remember, the x button is located right here, so I'm going to press the x button. And then the square button is here. 
So I have y equals x squared. Well, let's go ahead and look at the graph and see what it looks like. So when I graph this on my notes, it's going to look very similar to this. But you know my class, you can't just draw a picture. You've got to plot some points. Well, where do I go on the calculator to get a table with some points on it? Well, I see that table is right here in blue. So in order to get to that, I'm going to hit second graph to get to that blue button. All right. So now you have a bunch of these numbers. Now, you're like, well, I don't know what numbers to pick. Like, I don't, I don't understand where I'm supposed to pick. OK, what do we know about our vertex? OK, the vertex, again, is the highest or lowest point, right? So for example, the vertex is this green dot here. Now, what do you notice about it? Does that point ever get its own reflection, is, my, is the better question asked. So for example, this red point, if I were to split it down this line here and move it to the other side, is there a matching point on the other side? Yeah, because it's like a mirror image. Remember, the line of symmetry cuts it in half exactly. So anything that happens on one side, it happens to the other side. Just like right here, there's a point on this side and a point on that side. What about right here? Is there another point on the other side? Sure, so they're matching points. But what about the vertex? It doesn't have any matching pairs. So in the calculator, I'm looking for my y values. And I'll tell you why. Your x values are always going to go up by 1, always, because that's how your calculator is set up to be. It goes up by 1s on the x-axis. It will always go up by 1s unless you tell it to do differently. So this is always going to stay the same. The numbers that always change are the blue numbers in your y column. Now you're like, well, I still don't know what I'm looking for. Well, you want to look for the vertex here. The vertex is the number that doesn't have any matching pairs, no matching twins. So again, I don't want to be looking at these x numbers. I just want to look at the blue numbers. OK, so I'm going to show you something. You're looking for the number that doesn't have a twin. OK, I call them twins, or you can call them pairs, whatever you want to call them. So do you see how there's a 9 here? Are there any other 9s on this list? Yes. So I found one pair. Now. The key to this is you want to get close and close to the pair. So you're looking for the center. So then you have four. Do you have any matching pairs with that? Yes. One. One has a twin. So nine has a twin. Four has a twin. One has a twin. Does zero have a twin? No. That's my vertex. That's the middle of my parabola. So the point zero, zero is the middle of my parabola. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and show you on the whiteboard what I mean, and maybe this will help you out. So sometimes we call it the rainbow trick. So I have my whiteboard here. So for example, I had 9, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, 9. OK, so you want your rainbow to get close and close together. And you want the center of the rainbow, because the center of the rainbow tells me where my vertex is. So I have 9 to 9. 4 matches with 4. 1 matches with 1. Do you see how there's a rainbow? You want the number that's in the very center of your rainbow, and that in this case is 0. It's not always 0, but in this case it is. Okay, so that means that when I'm doing my graph, okay, when I'm doing my graph, I want to be able to have some numbers to plot. So I'm going to make an x and y table. Now you don't have to do this, but it is helpful to have so that you have something to reference to. So I'm going to make an x and y table. Okay, now when you're graphing quadratics, I need five points. And that center point is always your vertex. And in this case, it is 0, 0. Again, it is the one that does not have a twin. Okay, and then you're going to look in your calculator for the two points below it. So I'll show you. The two points below 0, 0 are 1, 1 and 2, 4. So these are the next two points I want to write down. I also want to write down the next two points above it. So I'm going to write the point negative 1, 1 and negative 2, 4 as well because I want five points in able to be able to graph this. Now the reason why I picked these points is because it gives me the best image of my, my quadratic here. Because if I pick too big of numbers, I can't fit it, right? Like if I pick something that's like 16, 17, I can't even graph that. It won't fit. So you want to pick numbers that are easily graphable. Okay. Now once you have this table, once you have these tables of numbers, we're going to plot each point. So I'm going to plot this one first. Negative 2, positive 4. That's going to be the left 2 and then up 4. Okay. Then I'm going to plot the next one. Negative 1, positive 1. That's going to be the left 1, up 1. 0, 0. That's going to be in the center. Positive 1, positive 1. So 1, up 1. 
and then I have positive 2, positive 4. So 2, 4. So I'm just plotting it like a normal point, 2, comma 4. So if you're having trouble with graphing, please let me know because it is super essential in order to be able to do these, okay? Um, now, once you have this, you are free to draw a line or a little U through this. Remember that U is called the parabola. That's just the name of it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw a line. I just wanted to match my numbers down there. Whoops. Okay, now I do draw arrows because it does, does go on forever and ever. Now, once I have my quadratic drawn, oops, I can actually identify some stuff. So, what's the vertex of this graph? Well, without even graphing it, I know from my table that the vertex is the one with no twin. So, my vertex is 0, 0. Okay, now this is the parent function, so a lot of the stuff about, like all of this stuff here will be pretty basic. And what I mean by basic is not much randomness going on. There's mostly going to be zeros showing up, okay? So your vertex here is zero, zero. It's the most middle point. Is this a minimum point graph or a maximum point graph? This is going to be a minimum, okay? Because there's a minimum point at the very, very bottom. Well, what's the value of that minimum point? Well, what's the lowest y value? You're looking for the y value. Well, the lowest y value it ever goes to is 0. Okay? Next, we're going to do the axis of symmetry. Well, the axis of symmetry is the line that goes down the middle that cuts my parabola in half. And that, in this case, is going to be at 0. But it always starts as x equals a number. And that number is 0. It goes through my x-axis at 0. And again, just a reminder that this number is the same as the x value in your vertex. Okay. Now, again, this is the parent function. So there's going to be a lot of zeros because there's nothing happening, really. x-intercepts. Where does it cross my x-axis? So you're looking for points on the x-axis. And I only have one, okay? and it's the point 0, 0. All right? The next thing we're going to identify is the, what's, what color am I going to use here? Hmm, pink. Why? Oh, no, I already used pink. Dang it. Purple. Nope, I've used purple. Okay, I'm running on colors. Pink, I guess. Dark pink. All right, y-intercept. Where does it cross my y-axis? Well, this is the y-axis, and so you're looking for a point that it crosses. Well, it crosses at 0, 0. The next thing we're going to do is the domain values. Again, I told you domain is going to typically be all real numbers, okay, unless it's a word problem. Right? Word problems, it will tell us, like, if it stops or it shows that, it's, that it stops. Okay, and then what's my range? Well, again, your range always starts off as y. Since this parabola opens up, it's going to be greater than or equal to, okay? And then what is the number of your vertex that is the y value? It's going to be 0. So I'm going to show you. This number is the same as that number there, okay? So they're always going to be the same. So a lot of zeros, it's the parent. Okay, so now we're going to actually start with some actual um, more different ones. So we have two more left, so we're almost done this video. I'm so sorry that it's long, but I want to make sure that you get all the information that you need. So remember, if A is positive, your parabola is going to open up, okay? So without even graphing it, I already know if it's going to open up or down. If A is negative, it's going to open that's not how you spell open. It's going to open down. Okay. All right. So without graphing this one, will this open up or down? It's going to open up. It's positive 2. Now, one thing I haven't told you yet is there's a shortcut to know what the y-intercept is. So in standard form, we have ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, so our a here is 2, our b is negative 4, and our c is 4. So something I didn't tell you was that the y-intercept, you can actually see it in standard form. So in standard form, or in, I didn't write form, in standard form, it is the c value. Come on. It is the C value. So what is our C here? Well, our C here is positive 4. So that means that my y-intercept is going to be 0, comma 4. Remember, y-intercepts are always 0, comma number. So I'll, we'll check that. So we're going to graph this and see if that's actually true. But again, that's the shortcut. So you're already able to identify that.
the y-intercept is 4, and you know this opens up because a is positive. So we just got one free answer without doing any graphing. So now I'm going to show you how to graph this. So you're going to type this all into your calculator, okay? I'm going to type in 2x squared minus 4x plus 5. So I'm going to go over to my camera. We're going to type this in. Okay, I'm going to turn my, my uh, thing back on. So to graph something, again, you want to go to y equals. And you're going to type it. I'm going to clear everything I have. 2x squared, right? 2x squared minus, okay? You don't want to put negative on accident because it will change your numbers. Minus 4x plus 4. So I have exactly what I have on my paper. And now I want to go look at the table. Well, how do I get to table? I do second graph. Okay, so now I have all these numbers. Now sometimes you might be in really, really big numbers, but you know I'm never going to make you graph that big of a number. So you always want to scroll down and look at the y values that are more reasonable for you to graph, okay? Now what are we looking for here? Again, we're looking for the number that is the one that doesn't have a twin, okay? So let's look. Which one of these doesn't have a twin? Well, you're like, well, 34 doesn't have a twin, but if I scroll up enough, it does. So if 34 has a twin, you want to keep going inside your rainbow. You're looking for the center of that rainbow. 20 has a twin, 10 has a twin, 4 has a twin, 2 does not have a twin, okay? Again, we're not paying attention to the x side. So 2 does not have a twin, which means that the center point is 1, 2. That's the vertex. The vertex is the one with no twin. So that means when I make my table, let me put my iPad. When I make my table, the center of my graph is going to be 1, 2. That's my vertex. So I actually already know that. Again, we can graph it to check, but I know that it's going to be. Okay, now you're going to pick the points, two points below and two points above. Well, it's going to be 2, 4, and 3, 10. Okay, and now we pick the two points above that point, which are going to be 0, 4, and negative 1, 10. Now, now, a trick to this is these numbers should always be the same. So the tens or the, the two most outer numbers will be the same and the two next to it will be the same. The only one that will be different is the vertex because it's the center. It doesn't have a twin. So we're going to graph this. Negative 1, positive 10, 0, 4, 1, 2, 2, 4, and 3, 10. Okay? Now, was I right about this opening up from earlier? Yeah, because my A value was positive. So this does open up like I thought it would. Okay? Now, let's see if our y-intercept was correct. I'm going to highlight the y-axis. Does it go through the y-axis at, at positive 4? Yes. So again, standard form tells me what the y-intercept is. The C value is the y-intercept. Okay? So that's super helpful to know later on. Okay, so now let's do the axis of symmetry. Also, was I right about my vertex? Is it positive 1, positive 2? Yes. It's always the center of your graph or the center of your table if you're doing the one with no uh, twins. Okay, so axis of symmetry is going to be x equals, and it's whatever the x value is for your vertex. So x equals 1. Okay? Is this a minimum or maximum function? This is going to be a minimum Okay, it has a lowest value. What is the minimum value? Again, you're looking on the y-axis. That's how you know how big or small things are, right? So on the y-axis, what's the most minimum y value that your graph hits? Well, the most minimum it hits is at positive 2. Okay, that's the most minimum value. Okay, roots. Well, what's a root? Remember, a root is an x-intercept. So do we have any x-intercepts here? No. Well, why not? Well, because it's never going to cross the x-axis. So we're just going to say none. Okay? Don't leave it blank because then it looks like you left it blank. You want to put none. Or there aren't any. Whatever you want to write. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> domain and range. Remember, domain is your x values. And in this case, we have all real numbers. Your range here is going to be y values. It's going to be greater than or equal to because it opens up and then whatever your y value is for the vertex, so 2. So these numbers are always the same, and it's actually the same as your value, just like I mentioned on this one right here. We talked about the vertex, the value, and the range. They were all negative 4, 
and these were all positive too. So that's one way to check yourself as you're going. Okay, and remember the y-intercept in standard form is the c value. So if the equation is in standard form, then I already know the y-intercept. Okay, looking at number three without graphing it and looking at the equation, do you think this is going to open up or open down? It's going to open down because a is negative one. Because a is negative, it's going to open down. Now, I already know something without even graphing, right? I know the y-intercept. What's the y-intercept going to be here? It's going to be negative 5. It is negative 5 because that's my c value. So my y-intercept, I automatically know that it's going to be 0, comma, negative 5. All right. Now let's go ahead and graph this. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back into the calculator. I know I'm going to have to make a table to help me out here, so I'm going to draw that real quick. So we have negative x squared plus 6x. Oh, let me mention that. When you're typing something in, you want to type it in the way that you would say it. So the first thing you would say would be negative x squared. So when you're typing in the calculator, that's going to be a negative sign. So you have negative x squared plus 6x. This sign right here is a minus sign because you would say minus 5. 6x minus 5. Negative and minus in your calculator are different. And if you type in the wrong one, it will give you something crazy. So I'm going to clear this out with the clear button. I have negative. Now remember the negative button is down here. Negative x squared plus 6x minus 5. And I'm going to hit second graph to get my table. Now, sometimes you will have to do some scrolling, but you might not always have to. You're looking for the ones with, so once you find a set of twins, then you can start going to find the center. So I notice that right here I have negative 5 and negative 5, 0, 0, 3, 3. So the one without a twin is 4, which means my vertex is 3, comma 4. All right, so I know that the center of my graph is going to be 0, not 0. 3 comma 4. So that's the center of my, my parabola. And then the two numbers below that are 4 comma 4, not 4 comma 4, 4 comma 3, and 5 comma 0. And then the next thing I have is 2 comma 3 and 1 comma 0. All right. So let's go ahead and graph this. So this would be at positive 1, 0, 2, positive 3, 3, positive 4, and that's going to be my vertex. And then I have 4, 3, and then 5, 0. So was I right about this opening downwards? Yes, because my A is negative. Okay? So A is negative here. So what's my vertex of this graph? Well, again, it's the most center middle point, your highest point in this case, and that is the point 3, 4. Now, do I know that without graphing it? Sure, because when I look at my table, it's the middle point. It's the center because it doesn't have a twin. What's my axis of symmetry? That's going to be written as x equals 3. That number is the same as the x value in your vertex. Remember, x equals 3, then it's the x in my vertex. All right, is this a minimum or a maximum? Well, in this case, we have a maximum because we have a highest point. So this is a max. Well, what's the value of the max? Well, again, you're looking at your y values here. What's the highest this graph goes or this parabola goes? It goes to the max at positive 4. So my max value is just 4. Solutions. Solutions are x-intercepts, right? So do we have any? We do. It crosses the x-axis twice. It crosses it once at 1, 0, and it crosses it again at 5, 0. So you want to list down both. So it is possible for it to, list, uh, for it to cross twice. Cross once or just 0 times. In this case, it crosses twice. In this case, it crosses, uh, crosses no times. And in this case, it crosses once. So again, you can have 0, 1, or 2 x-intercepts, solutions, roots, zeros, all of those. All right, so I'll just look at all of these. I'm just checking everything. All right, now was, oh, I didn't, I missed. Where am I? Now, was I right about the y-intercept? Because I, I see that the c value is my y-intercept, but I don't see it on my graph. Well, is this graph eventually going to hit the y-axis? 
It will. It will cross it eventually. But how do you know without looking at it? Well, one thing is it's your C value. But what do you know about a y-intercept? What does it always look like? It always looks like zero comma number. So you can always look in the calculator for the number, for the part where it says zero comma number. So if I show you my calculator, wherever you see where x is zero, zero comma number, zero, negative five. So if I don't want to look at my c value, I can always look in my calculator to see where this y-intercept is. Okay, domain values are your x values. So this is going to be all real numbers. Now your range here always starts with a y. But is this one going to be greater than or equal to or less than or equal to? It's going to be less than or equal to because it opens down. It's less than or equal to, and what number goes there? It's your y value of your vertex, so 4. And just as a reminder one more time, that number is going to be the same, and so is your maximum or minimum value depending on the problem. So in here I had a minimum, here I have a maximum, but again, they're all the same number. If you have any questions on this first part of the video over just graphing standard form, just please let me know. I will be here for tutorials.